I am joined now by Donald Trump in his office. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lester. I'm sure the phone has been ringing off the hook today. Give me some names. Who called with congratulations today? A name that might surprise us. Well, many people, but uh, really, I think most interesting people that you wouldn't believe. People that have been on your show saying terrible things, and now they all want to join. I don't want to do that. I think I have to let them come out and do the endorsements. But one called who said such bad things that, frankly, I said, how can you pivot back to me? He said, don't worry about it. They're politicians. Don't worry about it. So we're going to get a lot of endorsements. And I'm not so sure that endorsements matter, although Bobby Knight mattered a lot, I think, in Indiana because I won that so big. Did but you hear from Ted Cruz today? I did not. I did not. You, I didn't call him. Do you expect him. to have a conversation I, I do. I, I think we will. I, we got along very well for a long period of time. And then at the end, it was very competitive, very tough. He did a good job. He was a very competitive guy. How about John Kasich? Uh, I have not spoken to him. Uh, I've gotten along with him. We'll see how that goes, but I have not spoken to him. You were sitting here watching the top of the broadcast yeah. with us. You saw images of Republicans burning their Republican registration cards, so angry at the idea of you representing the party. What did you, what did you think when you saw that? Well, it's a little unfair, I think, uh, from a broadcasting standpoint, because you didn't show the fact that we have millions more people that voted in the primaries than ever before. I'll be setting a record, an all-time record, above Ronald Reagan, above uh, uh, Nixon above everybody. Uh, I just looked at it, it went back a long way uh, in terms of the Republicans coming in and voting for me in the primaries. I have many, many millions of people. Uh, I've gotten millions more than anybody else that ran. So we have a lot of new people coming into the party, Lester. Tremendous millions and millions of people. I think it's up over 70 percent. And nobody can believe it. It's one of the hottest stories in politics you're, today. You're speaking to the whole country now. You've said a lot of things. We've talked about this. Things that shocked people, that outraged people about a temporary ban on Muslim immigration to your characterizations of Mexican immigrants. Those things worked for you. They resonated. They worked. They got you to where you are today. But as you try to appeal to the entire country, do you stand by them? Do you stand, for example, by the idea of a, of a ban against foreign Muslims coming here? I do. We have to be vigilant. We have to be strong. We have to see what's going on. There's a big problem in the world. You look at what's happening with the migration in Europe. Uh, you look at Germany. It's crime riddled right now. Sounds like an urgent problem. Is that a first hundred days? Well, that is an urgent topic? problem. It is an urgent problem in this country. I mean, uh, San Bernardino, you look at what happened in Paris where people walk in and this is, uh, frankly, a place where they don't have guns and they walk in and they killed 130 people with hundreds of people in the hospital now critically wounded. Uh, it's a real problem and we have a president that doesn't want to even mention the name of radical Islamic terrorism and unless you're going to mention it, unless you're going to try and do something about it, you're never going to solve the problem. You've also promised to deport those in this country illegally. Do you stand by that? And come back, yes. They're going to be deported. Look, we either have a country or we don't. We have many illegals in the country and we have to get them out and go through a process, go through a system and ones that have done well and have really achieved, we want to bring them back in. Your, your negatives are still Staggering uh, disapproval: 69% uh, women, African Americans, 88% Latinos, 79 people under 34, 75% uh, disapprove. How much of that is self-inflicted by some of the rhetoric from the primary campaign, and how do you heal that? while still respecting those who got you here? Well, the highly respected Rasmussen poll just came out, and I'm 41 to 39 up on Hillary Clinton. It just came out. I haven't even started on Hillary Clinton yet, so I don't know what you're talking about with the negatives. Now, I will say, I think I'll do very well with women, and as you know, in the last seven states, which I won in landslides, I won in women, I won with African Americans, I won with Hispanics, I won at every single level. So you, you, you discard all these numbers? These, I don't discard anything. Numbers? I mean, I just started. I just got it, not even 24 hours ago. I mean, I didn't know until 24 hours ago whether or not I was going to even win Indiana, and I won that in a landslide, a, you know, a really record-setting landslide. You, you, you've said a number of times that you haven't really started on Hillary Clinton, so start on her. Give me, give me three words that, that you would use to define her that you will use as you press forward. Well, you know, um, bad judgment is a couple of words that we can use, and they were used by Bernie Sanders. Uh, Bernie Sanders said she's not qualified to run for president because she suffers from bad judgment. And I think that's true. All you have to do is look at the email scandal. She's under FBI investigation now, and maybe she'll survive because the Democrats are protecting her, but that's the only reason she'll survive. Is there anything off the table? If, if, you know, we talk about this epic showdown. Is there anything that that's off the table in terms of what you will go after. Well, I'll see what they do with me. I mean, if they are fair, I'll be fair. We're going to have a very high level campaign. I'd like to Bill see Clinton, that. Will he be part of this? If they are fair with me, I'm going to be fair with them. Otherwise, he becomes part of it. So, I mean, you you, you would bring it up, though? 
I would bring it up depending on what they bring up. It depends. I'd like to see a very high level policy oriented campaign. If they're if they treat me properly, I'm going to treat them properly. It would be a beautiful thing to see. You don't see it often, but I would like to see it. She today called used the term loose cannon in describing you and noted that loose cannons misfire. She talked about your blustering and your bullying. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, it's a nasty term that was given to her by one of her pollsters, I guess. But the fact is that we need strength in this country. She's not strong. She's not going to be strong at the border. She's not going to be strong with our military. Uh, she's not going to be strong with ISIS, uh, no matter how you look. Look at, the, look at what she's done with Libya. Look at what a disaster it is. Even her vote to go into Iraq was a disastrous vote. Now, she was one of many. But it was a disastrous vote. And I've been against Iraq for many, many years. I said it's going to destabilize the Middle East. You've been proud of the fact that you have self funded your campaign to this point. You talk about donations can have, you know, poor, bad influence. There is a super PAC being formed now to support you. Where, where do you stand now as you move into the very expensive general election campaign? Will you accept donations? Well, I don't know, first of all, about super PACs. I know that people may be like me and they form a super PAC, but I have nothing to do with it. As you know, I'm not allowed to have anything to do with it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, as far as the campaign, I'm making decisions right now, but probably we'll work with the Republican National Committee, raise a lot of money, and go out and beat Hillary. We're going to try and raise over a billion dollars, which is what's going to be necessary. I hear the Democrats maybe will get as high as $2 billion, but we want to raise up to a billion dollars, maybe even over that. I'm not even sure that's necessary because I have a big voice. I go on shows like yours. I explain the truth, and people seem to go along with it. I mean, you look at the victories that I had over 16 people that are senators and governors and, you know, high-level people, and one by one, they're gone. And we'll see what happens now. But I think Hillary actually will be easier to beat than many of the senators, governors, et cetera, that we just were victorious with. Tell me how the audit is going. You have not released your tax returns. You've talked about an IRS audit. Still going on? It's still going on. I mean, they go on for a long time. I've been, I mean, I've been audited. Think? And I'll tell you, it's, honestly, it's very unfair. I've been audited every year for 13 or 14 years. Every year I get audited. And I will absolutely release my returns when I when the audit ends. There's nothing in those returns you think that might make your supporters raise an eyebrow? No, nothing. You? It's a very standard audits, and I have them all the time. And I have other friends that are very wealthy. They don't even know what I'm talking about. When I say I'm audited, they say they've never been audited. I get audited every single year, and I think it's very unfair. Donald Trump, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time. Thank you very much. To you and Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.